Hey, welcome back to part two of our two-part tip on working locally on specific areas and selecting those areas. In the first part, you'll recall we made a selection of just these dogwoods using the color range tool. Now what we're going to do is apply that tool to solving a pretty common problem that I find with images that contain white. And basically what happens, let me turn this curve layer off, is Things that are white in reality, or we perceive as white, don't necessarily record as what we would consider pure white on screen. And if we go back to our color range tool, you can see that when we look at these dogwood petals, they're actually kind of green. And there's you know, some of this other color, whatever you'd call this, there's a little bit of yellowish uh, deep value of it. But these are kind of a pale, icky green. And what's happening here and why we don't get perfect whites is film doesn't record things perfectly. Rarely are we in light that's the same color balance as the film, so that induces some casts. Slight errors in processing. Maybe it sat in the sun for five minutes and that shifted things. And then some of those are enhanced sometimes when we scan. Basically what it gets down to is we're left with something less than pure white. And when I think of dogwood blossoms, often young blossoms have a little bit of green in it. But these really, the essence of them is a much purer, cleaner white. So I want to remove this cast. You know, you'll have this in clouds very often. Almost every cloud has some kind of cast into it. Any white really has this. And when I'm printing, I'll always look at the whites and check them for purity to, to make them look as good as they can. And a, a global change won't help us here. That's going to skew everything else and make it not look good. That's why we've got to work locally just on the whites and we've made the selection previously, let me cancel this. So we know these whites aren't perfect, and really what's going on here, you might try to attack this first with a color balance and just change the color balance and try to make it neutral, but the problem isn't so much the color not being balanced. The problem is there's just too much darn color in there. So what I'm gonna do, let's go back to the curve layer we created just as the, the part of our part one, just for an example. I'm not going to use that, but what I want to do is make that active, and I'm going to borrow the mask from that layer. If I take the mask and drag it on right there, I can reload the selection that we made in the last tip. Let me just zoom out a couple steps. And now I'm going to just throw that curve layer away because I don't want to come back to it. And what I'm going to do is make a new layer, hue saturation, and what we're going to explore is just sucking saturation out of this. And you can see if I just crank this all the way down, you know, we can make sure there's no color in that dogwood. And it's, it's pure white, but the problem is, and there's where you can see the edges of our mask uh, didn't perfectly include those areas. That's okay because we're not going to use this setting. But if I pull it down that far and just make it grayscale and you print it, it ends up looking like a grayscale image. Now, if that's what you're going for and trying to make some creative effect, that's great, but what I'm trying to do here is make a color photograph that I don't want that effect. I want it to seem natural and real, and as much as possible, the essence of standing here looking at this dogwood flower. So let's back off. We don't need to remove all the color, we just need to remove some. And let's just see where too far is. And this is really a visual decision. Going by the numbers doesn't necessarily help, although we can look at them, and you can see here Still a little green, but I'm pretty uh, neutral on stuff. Just sucking out a little bit of color. And from playing with this image before, because you always have to have on these cooking shows, you know, the one in the oven that we can pull out. I checked this out and minus 23 saturation looked pretty good. So let's go with that. And let's just turn this on and off really quick. And see down in here when I turn it on and off? You can see that little bit of color just disappear. It's just a little bit purer, a little bit cleaner now. But there's still, if we look at it by the numbers, a little bit too much green balance in here. And the color of it, you know, I don't color correct by the numbers. I'll sometimes use them to see things that are subtle on screen, but I want to color correct by what visually looks right to me on a calibrated monitor. Let's go and borrow this selection again and make a color balance layer. And let's work on just these flowers and just try to bring a little bit better color to it. 
And since this is all pretty much a highlight, let's work on the highlight tone balance. And let's just slide things around. You can see if I, if I add cyan really quickly, I'm just adding a few points, that starts to look mm, strange and blow out. Red isn't really what we want in here. Adding red isn't doing anything. Let's look a little bit magenta and hey, there's something going on. That little bit of green, add magenta and you kill the greens. Interesting how that color theory works. If we add green, there we start to go back to what we didn't want. So let's just play around here and go back and forth between a couple small units. I think minus eight looks pretty good. Not that I checked this out beforehand or anything. And let's look at blue and just see, you know, when I'm color balancing, I just like to grab the sliders and see which th way things want to lean. If you really just yank the wheel and uh, give it a good twist, what happens? You know, we don't really want these to be any more blue, although that can feel, blue can make whites feel really crisp and light. That's just not the essence of what a dogwood flower is. So I'm just going to add a little bit of yellow. Let me go back and forth here. I'm going to enter in zero and I'm going to use command Z from the keyboard to just go back and forth. And the white just looks a little too pure and strong without any correction to the yellow. But when I add just that little bit of yellow in, it just feels a little bit more organic like those flowers really do. I'm going to click OK and you can see just with these two layers now, Let's turn it on and off. And let's just zoom in again and give you the viewers at home a closer look here. We've changed these flowers from what now look pretty green to me to just being a little bit brighter and open and having a bit more color in there. So that's how we work locally on just correcting whites that have color casts. And that's the end of our two-part tip. We'll see you again soon.